Hi, this is The Great Expanse. I swear, I don't have a problem. You have a problem. I may use Unity, but at least I'm not doing cocaine. <sighs> but I could probably afford to set my life straight and try to go clean. So, uh, what can I use to help while I go through withdrawal? Ah, here we are. Godot. The kids on Reddit love this one. I got some comments asking me to try out Godot, and by comments, I mean a single comment. But, you know, I have been wanting to try out Godot for a while now, so why not do it under the ruse of listening to my viewers? So, Godot is an open source game engine that has been gaining popularity all over the place. <clears throat> Reddit. And it's also perceived better as a 2D engine, which is perfect for me because I'm too scared and incompetent to go 3D. So, let's download it and jump right in. Uh... So, let's download it and jump right into the documentation. Woohoo! So, first things first, I think, is making something move. I thought it would just fall if there was a rigid body attached, but apparently not. Okay, so the sprite needs to be set as a child of the rigid body. That's a start, but it's not colliding. And I was using the wrong component. I need a static body 2D, not an area 2D. Okay, and let's figure out how to make the player move. And here it is. Godot's input system is pretty much the same as Unity's, in that you set up the inputs in the project settings and then check the inputs via code with the string values. Except Unity allows you to check specific button inputs in code without needing to set them up in the editor, which is usually what I do. I'm not sure if Godot allows for the same thing or not, but I couldn't seem to find something like that after like one minute of searching. Not that it actually matters though. But Unity's inputs are based on axes for some reason, while Godot's are just button presses, with methods that provide the same functionality, which to me just seems to be simpler. Unity also has a new input system, but I know literally nothing about it, so I can't compare it. Since I've mastered everything about the engine already, I have an idea for a little game. So the plan is to just make a simple bullet hell game. That's it, nothing crazy. There will probably only be like one level, because learning the engine is already taking long enough. So I wanted to start with some basic terrain, so I need to figure out how to make a tile map. To start, the terrain theme is this brick castle aesthetic. It was really hard not to make it a cave aesthetic again, trust me. It was actually really easy to get going. I spent too long realizing that you need to hit the select button before you can place tiles, but besides that, it went smoothly. And then adding a collider to each tile is super easy as well. You just go into the tile set settings and add which tiles you want to have collision. However, I can't really compare this tile map system to Unity's at all because I've never used a tile map in Unity before. Honestly, there's a lot of Unity features that I've just never bothered using. Now we need to create player movement that's better than the script I stole from Godot's tutorial site, as well as figure out how to make the camera follow the player. Here's the spray I'm using for the player. Since this game is simple, I just wanted to give the player one hit point, so I thought, you know what else has one hit point? Glass. So I made this little ghost in a lantern. But it seems that the collider is the incorrect size, which it shouldn't be because I set it to the size of the sprite. Huh. And for some reason I changed the scale of the collision shape. It works perfectly now. First attempt with adding forces. Okay, nice. Just need to scale down impulse and stop it from rotating. And with some tweaking, I like this. But it's jittery, so we need interpolation. But when I was searching for an interpolation field on the rigid body or in the project settings, there was nothing. Which is honestly really strange to me. It's kind of a huge feature that makes a big difference, so I don't know how there isn't a simple fix for it. This is the first thing in Godot I've noticed that I don't like, but because I don't want to spend forever on it, I'm probably not going to bother wasting time fixing it. But if any of you knows of a solution, I would love to hear it. And then I needed to get the sprite animation going, and Godot has an animated sprite 2D node, which makes it pretty easy to set up. In Unity, I had to make a custom script to do this, and it wasn't as good as what Godot offers because their system allows for multiple animations, so this is pretty nice. Now for the camera to follow the player. First, the background. I probably shouldn't have wasted time doing this, but I made a super boring background. It's just more bricks. Godot has a parallax effect node built in, so I'm gonna use it. Here is the camera follow working first try. Ah, shoot, wrong clip. So I wrote an entire rant in the script about how Godot doesn't have a way to set node references in the inspector, but then I saw this and then realize there's a thing called node paths, which solves that entire problem. They act as a path that can be easily set in the inspector, and it allows you to change the name of the nodes as well as move them around. The only difference from Unity is that you have to call the get node method with the node path as a parameter to actually get the node. So it's one extra step, but whatever. Oh man. 
I was so close to being socially outcast by Reddit, and being socially outcast by the social outcasts is an absolute low point. Speaking of Redditors, now I need to work on a way to make this character take damage and die alone. So Unity has tags that you can assign to game objects, which then you can check in your scripts to define different behavior for different objects. I'm not seeing anything like that in the node inspector, so let's find out what their alternative is. So apparently Godot has a thing called groups, which are more powerful and versatile. Apparently one node can be added to multiple groups, which is nice. So I made a script that damages objects that collide with it, and a script that can take damage. That's it. And when the player collides with the obstacles, which I made this texture for, they unceremoniously die. Let's fix that. I know people are always simping for Unity's particle system, so I'm curious to see how Godot's stacks up. So they have a GPU particle system, and they have a CPU particle system. I think the CPU particle system has more features, so even though that's more expensive, I'm just gonna use that. I shouldn't need to worry about it though, because this game is really small. One thing I'm noticing that I like more about Unity's particle system is that it uses drag to slow particles down, which basically means that Unity's particles slow down more naturally, because the force applied to slow down particles is dependent on the particle's velocity. But Godot uses damping, which slows down the particles linearly, which kind of looks bad. They have a damping curve, but it's not intuitive to use, and it's frustrating to work with to get the effect you want. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of that, but maybe there's some way to get the effect that I want that I don't know about. So, here are some simple particles that appear when the player dies, as well as a camera shake. Then I wanted the ability to save the number of deaths between scene reloads, so I made a script that holds the variable and then put it into an autoload node to make it globally accessible. And with some UI to display it, here it is. I don't have much to say about the UI, it's pretty good I guess. And now when you die, the screen fades out. I started using what would be the Godot equivalent of coroutines to make this. The await keyword waits for a signal before continuing the code where it left off at, which allows you to gradually do things over time. Except, the signal for the end of the frame, as well as the delta time for a frame, can't be accessed from a static property. You actually have to have a node reference to get both the frame end signal and the delta time, which is sort of strange coming from Unity. So, my static helper class needs to have a node auto-loaded in the background, which I then need to access in order for my coroutines to be able to function statically. Okay, okay, okay. Let's work on the main part of the game, the moving bullets that need to be dodged. The bullet pattern will be executed in this script, and the pattern itself will be stored as a resource. And when I tried to create a class to represent each bullet in the pattern, I found that you can't expose custom classes in the inspector. Which is honestly, literally the worst thing that has ever happened to me in my entire life. So yeah, you know how my day is going. Strangely, however, Godot supports custom enums in the inspector, which Unity does not. So I guess instead of using an array of classes to group the bullet information, I'm just going to create a bunch of separate arrays of the information that was otherwise going to be stored in a class. And then I can store a resource for each pattern of bullets, and then put those pattern resources in an array on the script that executes them in order. I'm storing the bullet positions in polar coordinates, as I figured it would be easier to create the patterns that way, instead of manually inputting the xy positions. Here's a simple test of the bullet generation. Okay, now comes the tedious part, which is making even more bullets and setting up the bullet patterns. Here are the different bullets. There wasn't really a design decision for any of them, I just made circles but in different sizes and colors. I only made four because I'm kinda running low on time. And actually, before making the patterns, I just made more of the room and made this barrier lock behind the player when they enter. If you survive the bullets, then it unlocks this next door and you move on. The door wasn't working at first, as the collision wouldn't turn on, but then I realized I was setting the wrong field, so changing that fixed it up. Now to work on the patterns. It was tedious, but I got it done. It really just consisted of changing a bunch of numbers in the inspector. Making patterns in straight lines was kind of annoying, because I set the bullet positions in polar coordinates. I don't regret doing it, because it's just made everything else easier, so yeah. Plus, to make straight lines easier, I actually just wrote a command line tool to output a line as a set of polar coordinates, because doing that was totally easier than spending two minutes doing the calculations myself. Also, I wrote it in Rust, because I'm feeling very hip with the kids today. Now let's talk about Godot itself. The first thing that people usually mention about Godot is its node system. But to be honest, it's not really that different from the parent-child situation Unity has going on. There's differences, but it's not huge. Feel free to correct me and tell me why I'm a big dumb idiot in the comments, but honestly I'm not feeling a huge difference. But then again, I didn't really get into it that deep. 
Another thing is that Godot only allows for a single script per node, which is a little limiting. Unity really emphasizes the script reuse and using many scripts on one object, so this is a bit of a big change. Godot really seems to push you towards inheritance, but it's so limiting that it feels like composition with a bunch of child nodes is the only option. Maybe that's the point, I don't know. But like, if you're going to force us to create child nodes as the only way to add extra scripts, then you might as well add support for multiple scripts on one node. But since each script has to extend the node it's currently on, that isn't possible. I really don't understand the love for inheritance sometimes. It can be useful, but for a lot of cases, it just becomes a pain to maintain. Composition over inheritance is where it's at. One thing I am a fan of is Godot's signal system. It makes it pretty easy to connect two nodes via the editor, as all nodes emit signals for various actions, which then you can assign methods to in the inspector. It's very simple and reduces the need to hardcode connections between nodes, which is good. For example, to detect a collision, you don't need to create a script that overrides the collision update method like in Unity. All you have to do is grab the signal and attach it to the method on another node that you want to call. You can do this in Unity, but it just takes your own script, and it's not as universal. My only gripe with this is the limitations with passing arguments via signals. If a signal by default passes an argument, like a node that has been collided with, you have two choices. Either the method being called has to have the same value being passed by the signal, which isn't always what you want, or you can drop the signal's argument, but then you can't pass any other custom arguments through. So it's a little frustrating when you want two nodes to talk, but you can't pass any custom arguments from the editor without changing code. Ideally, you would be able to drop and add whatever values you wanted to pass through, but right now, you can't. Additionally, there isn't any way to connect signals to global, quote-unquote, static nodes, which is also a little frustrating, because you can in Unity, at least with the Ult Events plugin, which I love. One thing from Unity that I do miss is the ability to see and edit the running game in the editor. I know Godot wasn't built for that, but it's very handy for debugging. Something I'm very fond of is the quick compilation time. In Unity, every time you change a script, Unity steals 5 to 10 seconds of your precious life on this planet to recompile. But Godot, it takes half a second. You save your changes on a script and boom, it's all set. It is so nice. I know it's because GDScript is a scripting language and isn't actually compiling anything, but that doesn't change the fact that it's super nice. I mean, I'd prefer to have a real programming language over the quick compilation time, but you know, let's take the positives where we can get them. Okay, time to literally just whine for a bit. These are going to be problems I had with Godot that are virtually non-existent in Unity. Just hold in your unbridled rage while I vent. Okay, so most of my complaints are just a bunch of small inefficiency things, like assigning resources is slow and clunky. You can see the problem I'm having here in dragging the resource, and sometimes it just opens the resource as opposed to dragging it. Just handling resources in general seems to be laggy and slow, while on Unity, managing prefabs is smooth and easy. And copying and pasting resources doesn't work, at least not for me. And attempting to load via file requires you to scroll down this giant list where load is all the way at the bottom for some reason. And even then, you still have to navigate files to load it. And there are other things, like the UI being a little too cluttered, important commonly accessed fields being stuck behind tabs, which makes them slow to modify, connecting signals sends you to the script tab every single time you connect, undoing with control Z is just finicky, and sometimes you have to click multiple times on a button before it actually does what you want. And I do have more small complaints like this, but I don't feel they're all worth going over right now, so I won't. It's just that a lot of these small things add up and makes attempting to navigate and work efficiently really frustrating. I'm really not trying to shill for either Unity or Godot here, I'm just comparing their differences with what I personally experienced. Everyone praises Godot, and rightly so, because an open source game engine such as this is really impressive. I would love to support an open source project like this more, but as sophisticated as Godot is, it's nowhere close to what Unity is. I know people love to love Godot, and people love to hate Unity, but they're completely different tools for different purposes. For someone looking to make more than just small one-off games, Godot isn't really the right tool. It's inefficient to work with and manage, its performance just isn't as good as Unity, and it doesn't have the same level of support. Wow, I feel like I'm really dogging on this engine. I feel like I very clearly need to clarify this. Godot is not a bad engine, and I would love to see it become more mainstream. But I plan on starting a more long-term project in the future, and I wanted to try out other engines, and I don't think Godot is what I'm going to settle on, at least not right now. However, all this stems from my experience with one project in Godot, so take it with a grain of salt. If I said anything completely incorrect, let me know, and I'll probably update the description with a list of what I incorrectly stated. Okay, and to wrap it up, 
I just made a title screen and called it done. The title of this game is Phantom Bound because it's about a little ghost trapped in a lantern. Woo. And this is all I'm going to work on this for now. Uh, I found this out after finishing. It takes forever to load and then runs really slow when it does. Oof. I published it on my itch page anyway though. Feel free to play it. I personally wouldn't though, it kinda sucks. You know what doesn't suck though? Cavern Clinger on the iOS App Store or Google Play Store is free to play. Travel through endless caves, collecting gems, dodging obstacles, and escaping the lava wall as it gets faster and faster. You can use your gems to purchase over 20 unique skins, each with unique abilities to help you travel further. Also, there's a boss fight. I personally know the developer and can confirm he is quite handsome. Oh, um, and Cavern Clinger is fun too, I guess. I, <clears throat> I mean, the developer has a video up about how he made it. It's not a very good video, but feel free to go over there and watch it anyway, because he has a small channel and needs all the support he can get. Now that the video is over, feel free to subscribe, but y you know, you don't have to. It's completely optional. Well, I hope I don't relapse. See you next time. Bye bye